When I got the diagnosis, I was still working and I wanted to carry on working. I knew that the more you use your brain, the slower your decline should be. So I was very keen to keep doing things. So by, by then, everything had settled back down at work. So the day after, or the next day I was in work, I told our trustees, we actually had a board meeting, I told our trustees about the diagnosis. And one of the reasons I told them was because one of my responsibilities, I was head of governance. And having somebody with dementia in charge of governance in a research area, well, if you get something wrong, it could have been the end of the organisation. So I told them. And they were very good, very willing to help. My immediate boss was incredible. He said to me, right, I don't want to lose you because you've got knowledge capital I, he, I, the organisation really needs. So I don't want to lose you. So you focus on what you can do and I'll take care of the rest. So he was, he was really good. Um, and after that, we'd have six monthly reviews and if things needed to change, then we'd discuss them and we'd make changes. And the only real change was when I first got diagnosed, I was a line manager for everybody in the organisation. And over time, we started contracting that. So I started managing small, a smaller team. And ultimately, when I left, I was managing a team of just four people. And the reason we changed things was everybody was very supportive outwardly. But you also have one or two difficult people in an organisation. And what was happening was they're the ones that you really need to manage and watch. And they started using my dementia as the reason for their failings. And they'd say to me, I'd said this, or they would tell me I hadn't said something. And I don't believe I create false memories. So I'm fairly, fairly sure of what I have said. If I remember it, I'm fairly sure I, I've said it. And things that are said to me that I just are not typical of me, I'm fairly sure I never, I'd never have said it. Anyway, they were saying things that I'd supposedly said or hadn't said and using it to, to cover up what they hadn't done that they should have done. So rather than um, me having to deal with the stress of that and having to write everything down and cover my backside all the time, we just thought, right, the easiest way out of this is cut them out of my working life. Someone else can have the problem and I can then focus on what I can still do. So that was, that was really good. So in terms of being able to carry on working, I was so glad that I didn't have the knee-jerk reaction many people have and just hand the notice in the next day, a lot, a lot of people do. And I carried on for five years after that, and then it did get too difficult. So um, when I left, it was really on my terms.